everyone and a welcome to day four of a tuning in to guidance your free workshop and this is like I said this is day four and here on day four we're going to be talking about the old programming of how it is that we receive guidance we're going to be talking all about really just that old programming that has just really come forward uh, a lot in the last couple of days. And we're also gonna be talking uh, wherever else spirit really guides us. I just know my main topic and that's about it. Uh, and spirit will just guide the rest. And that's the way that it always should be. You can have a little bit of an idea and then just let spirit take hold and let it go. So let's do a quick little review of all of the uh, different uh, things that we have talked about uh, over the last four days, shall we? And of course, I'm going to be sharing this out, which is why we're doing this quick little review. And I invite you guys to, of course, share it out as well if you feel the need to. If you don't, that's totally fine. Uh, you can share it out to your groups or you can share it out to um, your friends and invite them in if that's something you would like to do. So, like I said, I'm just sharing it out. Oh, good. I'm so glad you finally got to catch me tonight, Karen. Yay. Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. So, like I said, I'm just going to share this out real quick. And then we will get right to the topic and we'll get to these topics for tonight. So like I said, for day one, it was all what is guidance? Where does guidance come from? Guidance, we know, doesn't come from out here. The best guidance that we can receive is in here. Now, can we receive signs and symbols from the world? Of course we can. That's, it's not to say that we can't, but the best guidance comes from right here within you. Now I point to the heart and I actually had someone ask me a question. Why do you always point to your heart? And it's because I was told that the heart is a symbol that represents love. And that's what's always guiding us. It's love that's guiding us. Humanity has set forth to say, you know, that the heart, the heart chakra. Why, hello, thanks for joining. Uh, the heart or the heart chakra is really about that we've labeled it or had that symbol for it to be about emotions, about love. And so that's why, you know, I always point to the heart or always am going to the heart because that's what I've been told. That is that center that we can really receive it in. And so then next, <laughs> uh, we talked about, uh, you know, the different types of guidance that we can receive. And, you know, are we receiving guidance from our ego or are we receiving it from spirit? We know spirit's guidance is loving, kind, gentle, peaceful, compelling. While, on the other hand, ego's is hasty and mean and, you know, really, what's the best word for it? It lashes you if you do not pay attention to it. Uh, or if you don't do what it tells you to do at that certain time, it really is mean about it. Um, ego's guidance is about the past or about the future. It's never about the present moment. It's never about a next step. It's always trying to, you know, be very calculating, analyzing, stuff like that. And then we talked about why it's not important that if you don't know the name of your guides, it's okay. You don't need to know their names. I mean, let's be really honest. You don't need to know their names. Just like William Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would still smell as sweet. All right? And so that was all on day one, which you can go back and watch the replay. Day two was all about agenda, about not asking with agenda, not getting into the agenda, learning to be more open-ended with spirit, still asking for specifics, but not being so attached to the way that you think it has to be. Then day three was all about... What do we talk about? Oh, the fear of hearing specifics, the fear of actually hearing guidance, the fear of being in the moment. And so today, like I said, we are going to be talking about that old programming of how we think guidance needs to come in, that old guide or that old programming of how we think psychics, if you will, or intuitives um, really get their information and how they can do that. 
So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. I'm just sharing it out to two more groups and then we will be all good. So let me just post this one, there we go. And then one more group and then we should be all set and ready to go for today's free training. So, oh, well, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you are enjoying the, the words that are coming through for today. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about that old programming. Well, we all, ha we all have been taught in one way, shape, or another, the way that guidance is supposed to come, you know, from movies, television, social media, I mean, just technology in general, we have been so brainwashed to think that it has to be this big, booming voice that comes from the sky or this big, booming voice that comes at the end of your bed and that, you know, there has to be these big flashy lights and you have to see a being of transparent illuminescence at the end of your bed with a staff saying, the time is now. <laughs> which is not how guidance works. Guidance isn't about it being big and loud and someone screaming at you because, you know, that's not what love is. Love doesn't yell at you. Now, love can be very direct. Do not get me wrong. Love can be direct. Love can be stern, but it will never yell at you. It will never, you know, tell you you're worthless or tell you you're terrible or tell you anything like that. It'll always, you know, it may repeat itself. It may sound, you know, go do it now. It may come out and say that to you, but it will never, ever berate you and, and try to get you to do something out of fear. Never, ever. That's just not how love works. Because if love worked that way, well, then it wouldn't be love anymore. Then it would be fear and it would be an attack. And love doesn't want us to feel attacked. That's why its guidance is very gentle, is very calm, and can be stern and can be loud. But it always comes from that place of love. Always. If you feel any shred of fear about it, like if it's coming from a fearful space, then you know to take a step back and perhaps ask again. Hi, thanks for joining, thanks for being here. So, you know, but we have to get over that programming. We just, we have to really start to reprogram ourselves to realize that guidance doesn't have to be, you know, this big mysterious thing. I think that's something that a lot of people may have, like a, a old programming or an old way of thinking that guidance is somehow mysterious or guidance is somehow only for the chosen few. And that's not true. Everyone can be guided. Everyone deserves guidance. That is the truth beyond anything else. Hi, thanks for joining. So that that's the truth. Everyone deserves guidance and everyone needs guidance. You know, the moment that you think that you've got all of life figured out, that you, that's it, you've got it all, that is the moment that you have stepped into arrogance. You've stepped into arrogance and you need to take that step back and take a deep breath and be like, no, I, I still don't know anything. You may have a better idea, but it doesn't mean that you know everything. Now, subconsciously, yes, we do. We do know everything subconsciously. But we are not to that point where we can access it as of yet, which is why we need the guidance to help us along our ways. The Course in Miracles says that we have taught ourselves very poorly. But thank goodness that we have a teacher within us that knows exactly what to do and how to do it. But we have to ask. And that's the other part of guidance is ask, ask, ask. If you don't ask, then you're never going to get an answer. And that, is, and once again, then that brings us back to day three where we talked about, well, you know, I'm not getting an answer. Well, the reason you're not hearing is because you may be afraid of what the answer is or what spirit may tell you to do, but there's nothing to fear. Spirit is always looking out for your highest and best good. That's just what it's there to do. So how do we begin to get over this old programming? How do we begin to really access guidance from, instead of, ugh, only certain people can do it. Ugh, guidance is so hard. 
or you know any of those other thought systems or oh only certain people can do it uh, i'm not psychic enough i'm not in tune enough i am i'm not in a loving mindset enough how do we begin to break that well one thing of course is one of my favorites and if you've been on my channel or you've been on my page for any amount of time in the last year you know that tapping one of my favorite things to do. Tapping is fabulous. Affirmations are also fabulous. Now, here's what I want to say about affirmations. Affirmations are fabulous if you believe them. If you don't believe them, then there's really no point in saying them because it's just pouring pink, you know, pink fondant over a mud cake. It's still, the cake underneath it is still going to be mud. It may look pretty. It may look shiny. It may look beautiful, but you're going to cut into it. You're going to take a bite and it's going to be mud. So be sure if you do use affirmations that you actually believe the affirmations. Make them believable for you. Another great way that we can begin to deprogram ourselves from that is to realize and to start practicing with guidance. And like I gave to someone yesterday, I think it was yesterday, maybe it was the day before, I don't know, I get a little confused with all the lives that I've been doing this week, um, that... You put your hand over your heart. Remember, we put our hands over our hearts just as a symbol to say, okay, I'm tuning into the part of me that really knows. I'm tuning into love and going on that intuitive walk. You know, that's what we have. That's a great way to begin to trust your own intuition. That's what we have to begin to build, to kind of get over that old programming is to begin to build trust in our own ability to do what we thought we never could. You know, uh, last year, no, two years, last year, it was last year, uh, my mom, myself, and my sister, we went zip lining. I have no fear of heights. My mom, on the other hand, is terrified of heights, terrified of them. However, she faced her fear. Now, was she shaking by the end? Yes, but she faced her fear. You know, she looked at it and said, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. And she did. And she had, and yeah, like I said, she was shaking, but she had a great time by the end. So that is, you know, we have to look at it and we have to be able to face it in whatever way. And that's, you know, she had to go into trust. She had to trust that she was going to be okay. She had to trust the, the harness. She had to trust the people that she was with. She had to trust the instructors. And that's what we have to begin to build is this trust. And we so distrust guidance only because we are used to the dictates of this world. And what do I mean by that? Well, for, you know, me and my other business where I do Uber from, you know, six o'clock in the morning until 12 and then I come home and I get to meditate and I get to do clients from 12 until, you know, whenever the clients end. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, it's spring break. You know, all the kids are off school. So, you know, in my mind, I could be like, oh, that's going to stop me from getting more rides because everyone's gone. No one's around. Everyone's on spring break. Mah, 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 mah. And I had to stop myself and say, you know what? I am not under the laws of this world. I am governed by one law, the law of love. And the law of love makes sure that I have everything that I need. But I have to trust in that. And I have to trust that the guidance that I'm going to get is going to lead me exactly where I need to go. And let me tell you, I have made the exact same, if not more money, this week, even though it's been spring break. You know, that's the beautiful thing. Before, I was thinking, oh man, this is really going to put a hamper on stuff. You know, not many people are going to be around. Well... <laughs> there's a lot of people around. There's a lot of people still doing things. But I had to be willing to see the situation differently. Be willing to see it. And if you're not willing to see it differently, well, then there's just no point. You've already picked up the pen and wrote the end of the story. So why? So why? Why? Why, why are you going to go out there and try? You already know what's going to happen because you have already created that image in your mind. So and that's why we have to be willing to see things differently. And once again, we fear the different. We just do. We fear it because it's change. And the ego hates change because the ego hates to get out of its comfort zone. It hates to be proven wrong out of all things. I mean, think about when you've been proven wrong before and you can try to tell me, oh no, I don't get mad. Honey, we all do. Everyone has had a moment 
where someone has said something that has proven them wrong and they've got riled or they've got angry, it happens. It happens to all of us. It happens to me. It happens to enlightened masters. I'm, sh well, probably not to enlightened masters because they're enlightened. But, you know, as long as we are still here, as long as we still have egos, we're still going to have those triggers. They're still going to come up. It's not about being like, oh my gosh, well, if I'm going to be guided, then I'm not going to have those triggers. <laughs> Honey, no. Uh, this is what I am here to tell you. And not out of fear, not out of strife, not out of anything except pure, unconditional love. Which is, if you begin to tune into guidance, you may be led into triggers so that way you can look at them and so that way you can let them go. You know, now yes, will spirit provide everything for you? Yes. Oh God, yes it will. It'll provide everything. And even though, you know, you may see the situation as, oh my gosh, you know, I followed my guidance, but here I am, I'm in this triggered situation. Well, once again, spirit knows you're ready for it. It didn't think you were ready. It knows you're ready. And I know we are just going through all these different topics, but this is just how it's happening for today. <laughs> you know, the last three days have been, very, I felt like they were very structured and spirit just said today, nope. <laughs> no structure today. Let me flow through. So that's just what I am doing. And so it's just another way that you, that's, and I think that's another part of the programming that if we follow guidance, that number one, we're going to mess it up. I think that's a big fear for a lot of people. I'm going to mess up the guidance. Once again, if you receive guidance, the only way that you can mess it up is you can't. You're working so closely with spirit, you don't even realize it. Everything that happens is not a mistake. Everything that happens is exactly how it is supposed to be. But we have such a hard time with that because it goes back to attachment, goes back to agenda, goes back to day two. Us always thinking that we know. You know, I know what's going to make me happy. I know what's best for me. And that, you know, we have to begin to realize we really don't. We have taught ourselves poorly and that's okay. Realize it, accept it, and move on. Because that's the only way that you are ever going to find peace is if you move on. Instead of berating yourself, instead of condemning yourself, instead of telling yourself you're so stupid or you're not good enough, let it go. Let it go. Accept it and move on. And that's all that we can do. So I'm just going to open it up to questions right now about what we have just kind of gone over, uh, what we have talked about thus far in the myriad of different topics that we have gone through. And I'll just open it up to some questions about the topic, about what we have touched on in any of that myriad of stuff that I've touched on. And, you know, while I am waiting for those questions, you know, the reason that I have been doing this I feel everything you're saying was legit for me. Well, wonderful, Heather. I'm so glad. Then all the messages were for you. Beautiful. And so, you know, like I said, the reason that I'm doing all of this is because, you know, I want to put myself out of business. I'm not looking for followers. I'm not looking for anything really. I'm looking to help people to realize their own greatness and their own capacity to tune into the guidance that is always readily available. And of course, you know, I can do it through this platform, but if you feel like you need more, you know, if you feel like you'd really like to work with people in a group, more one-on-one -on -one, and actually have more, you know, more time, more one-on-one -on -one attention and be able to work in partners to gain more of that, then you can go check out, which I'll put the link in here, you can go check out my eight weeks of guidance course. And it's, of course, more in depth than, you know, where I'm going here, which I have gone very much in depth with a lot of different things. But, you know, the exercises that we're going to do and the different things, the different tappings and so forth and so on we're going to do in that course are going to be very powerful and very integral to you tapping into that guidance that you already have access to. I'm not really telling you anything that you all already don't know. You already, you all already know everything that I'm telling you. All I'm doing is giving you a platform for consistency. And once again, it's your choice if you follow through. I can't make you follow through. I can't be like, um, hello, why are you not in class today? What's going on? That's not the kind of teacher that I am. 
I, I will not berate you. I will not condemn you. I will not, you know, come after you. If you want to be in the class, great, wonderful. If you can join, great, wonderful. If you can't, then that's okay too. You know, that's, it's, it's not about, it's just about you making that commitment to yourself if you feel that you're guided to do that. I'm my twin flame red for, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not doing readings today. No, that's not what I'm doing today. This is just our tuning into guidance workshop and the questions, once again, me opening it up to questions isn't about for readings, it's about opening up to the things that we have discussed for today in our talk. But here's the thing I wanna say, and I think I actually said it yesterday about twin flames. And here's what I want to say about that. Twin flames, you are whole onto yourself. You don't need someone else to complete you. And that's the one thing I want to get out there more than anything else in the world, really and truly, is a twin flame relationship. Once again, it's specialness. Get away from the specialness. All the children of God are special, yet none of them are special. If you are putting so much stock into one relationship, into that specialness that this one person is the only person in the whole entire entirety of creation that could ever complete you, then you must know one thing that you have limited yourself. You have limited your vastness. You have limited everything about you to a single point. And I am here to tell you all my beloveds, that you are not a single point of light. You are the vastness of light. You are not a dot. You are not a candle. You are a sunbeam from the sun. You don't need another sunbeam to make you more powerful. You don't need another sunbeam to complete you. You are already complete onto the sun. The sun is what makes you complete because it is your source. It is the truth of who you are. So, let us not, you know, dive into, oh no, I need a real, I need this twin flame. I need any of that because you don't. You are whole and complete onto yourself. Now, if you would like to have a holy relationship with someone, if you would like to have that, then that's where we move in. That's where we can really move into a beautiful space. Not, is this my twin flame? Is this not my twin flame? Let's instead, let's release those terms and say, can I get into a holy relationship with this person? And a holy relationship is one where you are completely whole. They are completely whole. And yes, you may have to rub up, you know, two whole beings may have to rub up against each other to smooth out some rough edges. But you are whole and complete onto yourself. They in a sense, they do not need you and you do not need them to feel that you are loved. So there is my message about that. And I'm so glad Spirit was able to come through uh, in that way for that message. And however that may strike you in whatever way. So, yeah. So if there are any questions about what we have discussed, um, and I guess we can go into the... Yeah, any questions about what I have discussed thus far, about any of the guidance principles or anything that we've kind of talked about, please feel free to put them in the comments. And if there are no questions, then this will just be our very short teaching for today. I think I've only been on for, yeah, about 25 minutes. So if that is what, if that's all that there is, then that's all that there is. <sighs> And so I will just send you all of my love and just continue and just, I'm going to wait just a minute or so to see if any questions pop up. And if they do, wonderful. And if they don't, that's okay too. But right now I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to send you my love by just gazing into the camera. So that's just something I feel guided to do. So I'm going to do it. How do you feel about guidance through dreams? Lori, I think guidance through dreams is wonderful. I think it's just another way in which spirit can speak to you in a way that it that your conscious mind can't necessarily get in the way of. Dreams can oftentimes be very revealing. But once again, sometimes uh, inside a dream, a rock is just a rock. 
A tree is just a tree. You have to use discernment. And, you know, that's what we have to use. Oh, I thank you so much. I appreciate it. Love should always be extended in whatever way. And I appreciate and love. And I just appreciate and love. That's it. And I thank you for your love. I thank you for that divine reflection. But yeah, it's all about discernment. It's just about discerning what it is that you need, what it is that you can get from that dream that really stood out to you that was perhaps very powerful for you. Beautiful. I'm so glad you're guided through your art. Art is a beautiful expression. Beautiful expression to be able to be done through, to allow the divine to do through you instead of you trying to do it and let the, you know, it goes back to once again, uh, my plan, not God's plan. And that's what we have to remember. It's always the divine plan. And so I love that you always allow yourself to be guided through your art. It's beautiful, beautiful. And so, yeah, I think that's just going to be the end of it for me today. I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for joining me. We went a lot of different places. And, you know, tomorrow we will just see where it goes. Tomorrow is the final day of this five-day free training. And I just send you all of my love.